Hey everybody, welcome back. It is week four of our kids worship study in August and we're so glad to see you this week. Have we got a treat for you. In fact, this is one of my favorite stories in the whole Bible because you know what? One time I had a friend going through a hard time and she reminded me that she needed someone to take her to Jesus. We're going to see today in our study of creativity how four friends used the gifts that God had given them the cre and came up with a creative way to get their friend to Jesus. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in the image of Christ. Before we open up our lesson in, in the book of Mark in our Bibles today, do two things for me. Number one, hit like so that we know you're here. And number two, hit share so that your friends can watch this with us. Now, if you take a moment to go to the Lord in prayer with me so that we can ask God to help us to listen well these next few minutes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the lessons that you give us each and every day and for the way that you prove yourself faithful even through our friends. Now, as Pastor David gets ready to open up his Bible to the book of Mark to share the story with us, we invite you to sit beside us, Holy Spirit. Calm our hearts, open our ears, and make us ready to hear what you would have us to learn for this week. Thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, welcome back, guys. I'm so excited that you're here with me today. I, uh, I want to tell you something. Whenever we do silly things, um, sometimes they're worth retelling. So I got a silly story for you. So when I used to work at Ford Motor Company, one of the things that we used to say is uh, we would have people go and get coffee cups full of thinner. Now that doesn't sound like a big thing to you. You don't know what thinner is. You, you know what a coffee cup looks like. But what they did is they gave us these little white styrofoam cups and we would tell people to go get thinner in them. Well, you see, those are made of uh, fluorocarbon type stuff, and I'm not sure exactly all the, the chemical makeup of it, but when you would put the thinner in it, it would dissolve the cup. So the new guy on the floor would always go and stick that thing in that bucket and try to get some of it out there, and the minute he touched it, the, the cup would go away. It would just vanish because it would, the thinner would dissolve the cup. That always made me laugh, because it's always fun to do something that's impossible to get people to do it. I can remember we would tell people to go get rope stretchers when we were at camp. We would go get tent um, pegs for people and there weren't any tent pegs to be found. We would tell them they would supposed to go up and get them and just laugh with people because they were new. But then sometimes they're given, we're given tasks that are just absolutely impossible. And sometimes we're given things that don't make sense. And, and I can remember a lot of projects I did when I was in school that seemed like they were insurmountable like keeping your notebook up to date, <laughs> like getting all your work turned in on time. Those always seem very impossible for me, but I'm sure you're not like that. I'm sure you keep ahead of your work all the time and that no one ever gives you a task that you think is impossible, like cleaning your room or maybe doing your laundry, taking the trash out. Some of those things seem really tough, but what if you were given a project that truly was impossible. What, what if you were given something that you thought was completely out of the scope of being able to really do it? What would you do then? Well, I'm going to tell you this story in Mark chapter 2. The Bible has a passage. Now, Mark is Matthew, then Mark in the New Testament. So it's in the back of the Bible, the second book. We're in chapter 2, so get your Bible and we're going to turn there. We're going to be in verses 1 through 12, and, and we're going to talk about four friends who helped do the impossible. And you're like, friends did impossible? Yeah. Well, let me tell you the background of this story. You see, there were these four friends who lived about the time that Jesus did. And so these four friends had a fifth friend. Their fifth friend didn't have the ability to walk. You see, he was lame from the time he was born. And he used to have to lay on a bed and he had four good friends who would pick him up and carry him from place to place. And you know something? There were not people with prosthetics and there was not issues with, with chairs and things. We didn't have those cool things to be able to help people then. And so what would happen is if he wanted to go somewhere, people would carry him. If he wanted to see something, people would carry him. If he needed to just go to the bathroom, people would have to carry him. 
Could you imagine that he was in that situation? But the thing is, is that he had four good friends around him who were like, let's do something for him. So in Mark chapter two, we're gonna see that Jesus enters into a house in Capernaum to teach. And whenever Jesus went anywhere, everybody came. So what happened is, is that the house began to be full of people. Now, I don't know if you guys can imagine that because right now we're dealing with a virus and everybody's supposed to keep social distancing and do all that. But you guys have been a part of that. You guys have been a part of a house party where there's a lot of people come over, like for a birthday for an uncle or aunt or grandpa or mom or dad or somebody. And there's just so many people in the house that it's very, very crowded. Nobody can get in, nobody can get out. Well, could you imagine that when Jesus was in the house? Great day, I bet there was a lot of people there. So there was a house, and it was in Capernaum, and Jesus had been teaching, and the house was filled with people. That's no place for a guy who's being carried from place to place, is it? Could you imagine trying to bump through that kind of a crowd? Well, these four friends are left with something to figure out. How are they going to get their friend to Jesus? So we're going to start reading in Mark chapter 2, verse 4. It says there, Mark 2, 4, since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and lowered him on the mat that he was lying on. Wow. Could you imagine what the people inside are thinking? Let's take a break from our story for just a second. And let's learn a little bit about family discipleship and then we'll get back to our story and find out what happens when four friends tear a hole in somebody's roof. Hey parents, I want to take just a little bit of time in the middle of the video here to talk to you about family discipleship. You see, family discipleship is what we're finding is being the most effective right now with us not being able to be in services as much, not being able to gather together as a church, and we just want to support you as the parent. I want to encourage you with these words out of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. The Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, these commands I give you today to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. See, what we're supposed to do as parents is really remind our kids about God, family, discipleship throughout our whole day. And we want to encourage you to take the steps necessary to see your kids grow spiritually, to see their spiritual journey extended. So in these times, we wanna support you through our online stuff like you're watching today. We also have stuff on our Family Matters page as well as great links in our Right Now Media. Make sure you take advantage of these and if there's any way we can help you, please let us know. Hey guys, welcome back. Please like and share the video because that's how we get the word about Northside Kids Online. Listen, you gotta hear this. So there's four friends who actually take their friend who was lying on a, bat, on a mat, who was crippled in his legs, they actually climb up on the roof and they tear a hole through this man's roof digging through it. Now, the people inside probably begin to see things fall down from the ceiling. They probably begin to wonder, what's going on? It's not an earthquake. And so here's the hole starting to get eaten in the ceiling. And all of a sudden, these guys let their friend down on ropes. Let's stop for just one second. Could you imagine if you were the guy who's been crippled since you were a kid and all of a sudden your four friends are lowering you from the ceiling on a rope in the middle of a crowd? I wonder if he was a little panicked. I wonder if he was holding on to that rope all the time going, help! I wonder what it was like for him to be lowered through the roof of a house. Now, I don't know what it was like. I can only imagine, and I have a very vivid imagination, that 
it was probably a bunch of dust and debris was in the house. There was dirt everywhere. They might not have let him down exactly even. He could be tilted one way or the other. But you know something? The thing is, is that his friends had an impossible task. They had a job that was bigger than them. They had, they had an insurmountable thing because they knew that Jesus was in the house and that their friend needed Jesus. And if they needed to get their friend to Jesus, they were going to do whatever it took to get him there. And that's what the point of this whole story is, is that the faith of four friends led him to be let down through the ceiling. Now, let's just pick up the story. What happens? What does Jesus do? Well, I want to read for you in Mark chapter 2, verse 5. It says, when Jesus saw their faith. Guys, he saw the faith of the friends. Not the faith of the guy who was being let down, which his faith could be good too. But he saw the faith of the friends. He said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins be forgiven. And immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was the way they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, Your sins be forgiven? Or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has the authority on the earth to forgive sins. So he said to that man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Whoa, stop for just one second. Hold the phone. Guys, the faith of these four friends who had let their friend down through the ceiling had led to this man having an experience with Jesus. And when this man had an experience with Jesus, Jesus forgave him of his sins. He went from a guy who was on a mat paralyzed to a guy who was able to walk home and carry that bed that he'd been on for so long all the way back home. He was healed. He was changed. He was never the same. You know something? That's exactly the picture of what friends can do when other friends need help. Because it was the friends who probably were having to be convinced of a good thing to do. They had to all get together and do it. It was a time when they had to work together to accomplish it. They didn't stop when they saw the crowd. They didn't stop when there was a little bit of resistance. They didn't stop when it seemed a little difficult. They went beyond, above and beyond, really above, wasn't it, up on the ceiling. They took the challenge that was difficult and they met the challenge with Guys, an ingenuitive spirit that said, there is a way to do this. And I wonder if maybe that ingenuity isn't what we need in our life. We've got a lot of restrictions. Maybe there's something that you can come up with that will help others see Jesus, even though there's a lot of barriers. The best part of this difficult situation is knowing that there were creative people at the end who would be able to help, and that creative person was Jesus Christ, the final creator. But you know those guys that led him through the ceiling? I applaud their creativity. They have really done something above and beyond. So, I want to ask you, how can working with others make you more creative? I'll bet you that those guys had to talk about it for a while before they ever figured out how they were going to get their friend to Jesus. Probably wasn't spur of the moment. Somebody had to bring a rope. Somebody had to know where the house was. Somebody had to know how to let him down. I bet you they even talked about how fast or how slow to do it. They worked together to be more creative as a team. And you know something? We know that. That two working together is much greater than two people working separately. And that's the whole point of our story today. How can working with someone make you more creative? Because it can help you be better. You can do it. It's going to be great. And I can't wait to see what you'll do to bring others to Jesus. Pray with me. Oh, Father, I can only imagine the looks on the faces of the people that owned the house. My mind is smiling right now. I can only imagine the looks of the, of the friends as their friend comes out carrying his bed. It's got to be great. Lord, I can only imagine the joy that was inside the heart of the paralyzed man when he was healed by you, when he met you and his sins were forgiven. Lord, I pray that each boy and girl would learn that working together as a church, coming together as a church, doing things as a church is much greater 
than we can do on our own. Help us not to get in the habit of not being with God's people. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, guys, see you next week. That's the beauty of church. We can do more together at church as a body of believers. You know, if either, any one of those four friends would have not done their job, their, their buddy would not have gotten to Jesus. See, we can do great things because we were created in the image of God. Remember our memory verse in Psalms 145 verse 3? It says, Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Think about that in light of the stories and the lessons that we've learned this month. See how God has been great through everything. We really can't understand how great He really is, but boy, I sure enjoy seeing it. Have a great week. Think about the ways that you can work together with someone this week to be creative, to show someone else how to get to Jesus. We'll see you later.